welcome everybody out there to another edition of Taking Stock Live, where we do just that. We take stock with some of the most inspirational, exciting, and thought leaders across the retail and consumer goods industry. Now, today is a very special day, and I hope you guys are comfortable because we have the opportunity to hear from my boss and someone who I have deeply admired from the moment I met her at Microsoft. I learn from her every single day when I'm with her in meetings or hearing about decisions she's made. And there are so many things we could talk about. In fact, I think the trick for today will be to try to stay on task. But because so many people ask both of us about career, career planning, mentorship and advice, that's going to be the real focus for today. So first off, Deb Cup, Corporate Vice President, Enterprise Commercial at Microsoft. Huge welcome to you. Thanks, Shelly. And thank you for such a sweet intro. I feel the same way about you, as you know. And I love your glasses. <laughs> same, 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 same. <laughs> Shelly and I also copy off each other's clothes and glasses. We chose not we to do. wear the same outfit today, but the same glasses. That will be another segment of taking stock. <laughs> How we take stock of, of the e-commerce market, personally. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> well, Deb, let's just jump right in. Uh, you obviously have accomplished so much already, but let's go back in time. Okay. And then and tell us a little bit about your first job and how did, where did it all start? Sure. Um, and first job, real job, or first job like when I was 13 job. Which one? <laughs> let's do both. Let's do both. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I first probably similar to many people. I think I started babysitting when I was 13 for kids in the neighborhood and uh, then went on to working as a hostess. And then I was a waitress for many years through college, which I loved. It was super fun and best way to make money, I thought, you know, quickly. Um, but I've always loved work. Like I just sort of enjoy getting engaged in things and feeling like I'm contributing something um, and feeling like, of course, that I'm getting something back in return in terms of how it feels for me. And then college, my first job was uh, for a small software company called Benchmark Systems. It was a great experience, you know, your first time out in the world. Um, but it also helped me understand that yeah, I didn't really want to work for a small family owned business. Like it just wasn't a fit for me. And it, this probably sounds awful because it's, it's not good career advice. <laughs> but at the time I was commuting almost an hour and a half from where I lived to the office. So my first change in career was simply because I didn't want to drive that far. So I started looking, and this is going to date me, I started looking through, you know, one ads and I was like, okay, I got to do something else. And so I ended up uh, responding to a sales position for a company called Standard Register. And I took that job and it was a 17 year experience. Um, I had about, I don't know, eight, eight different jobs there. It was wonderful. I worked with amazing people. Um, and then I moved on to SAP. So I was there for 17 years, went to SAP from there, and then SAP to Microsoft. So long years in between, but uh, not many stops, actually. I, I probably am rare in that regard. Like I haven't had, I haven't worked with that many different companies. Well, first off, I, I wanted to say, I think it's great you shared sort of the hostessing and babysitting. I, as a mom myself, my kids sometimes say, you know, what internship I should get. And I say, go work you know, at a Starbucks work as a, I think you learn as much in those roles as any, you know, anything else. And I also think the decision to make, uh, you know, not have a long commute is, is a really valuable one. People yeah. have to take stock about what's important to them in their life at the time. And an hour and a half commute is, is brutal and, a, and a, yeah. not the way you want to spend time. Right. So tell us a little bit about the roles you, you you said you haven't been in so many companies, but you have lots yeah. of different roles at both Standard Register and SAP. Yeah, and so I, I you know spent most of my career on the go-to-market side of the business. Um, I always loved being with customers, so I think even today, I, you know, nothing makes me more happy or gives me more energy than spending time with customers. So I think that's sort of a root of all the things I always wanna do is, you know, how do I make sure I'm engaging with those that are buying uh, or working with the things that we provide. So that part's been super fun and sort of a theme all along. I think generally I've done all sorts of, I started in, in individual, you know, individual contributor roles, which I loved and moved into management roles. And, and that was always something I thought was something I'd like to do. Um, and I, you know, it actually was, I mean, I, I love it so much. And I think as I've continued to grow through different jobs, the thing that's always been so fun for me is 
people, you know, like you talked about when you first came here, it was, I, I love our team. Like I, I love the opportunity to watch people grow and develop and watch the impact that they make. I don't think there's anything more rewarding that, to me, Like that's the piece that says this was a good day. Like I saw something that somebody did that just made me feel good inside and made me feel like they enjoy what they're doing and they're happy. So across all the different jobs, I think those are the types of things that I always sort of anchored on. So when you say taking stock, I sort of take stock of what I care about. Um, and the role itself, although super important, I think it's also about what is it gonna bring to me in terms of how I use my skills and capabilities for the company, but also for myself. So I think there's this balance of saying, what does the company need? And certainly you wanna be there for the company. And I think there's a lot of, we could go on for a lot on that topic, um, but there's also the, the concept of sort of what does it bring for you personally? Because if you're not happy, you're not gonna do a good job. So it sort of all connects together. So I think for me, it's both of those things. The other thing that's super important to me is who, surround, who I surround myself with. Who I work for matters a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, who I work with matters a lot. And as you know, we spend our lives here lately. <laughs> so at least you wanna be talking to people you enjoy having some, you enjoy spending some time with. Absolutely. And I, you know, I know you would never say this about yourself, but uh, the way you, as you said, approach hard problems and lead teams and get energy from your teams. I mean, it's it, it it's obvious that that's how you like to spend your time. Why did you, you know, in sort of the moves you've made, maybe tell us a little about thinking to go from Standard Register to SAP, SAP to Microsoft. Like what was the internal uh, yeah. thinking there? And it was, no move is easy. Like I think, especially for me, I have a deep sense of loyalty just naturally. So I always felt it was hard to go from one company to another company. And I, I loved my experience at Standard Register. I grew up there. I mean, I'm still great friends with many of the people that I work with there. And actually on one of my, uh, I do these little cup of sunshine things that I think you know about. My old CEO was part of that uh, just a couple of weeks ago. And so those connections stay really deep. So I remember literally bawling <laughs> when I left as when I left the standard register to go to SAP because of the personal connection. But the the I got to a point where I was saying to myself, am I learning? Um, am I growing? And do I feel like I'm in a position to continue to expand what I can do? And do I have a path? Like, do I feel good about my path? And when I when I got to that point at standard register, I didn't like I was at a place where I'm like this company specifically isn't creating the right transformation to survive. Um, we all sort of saw that coming. So I said, this is time. And I got lucky to be totally honest with you. I was on a panel um, with the president of SAP North America, just happened to be, we were working on a panel together and we started talking afterwards and he said, you should come to SAP. And so I, you know, of course, went through the interview process and everything, and it's an awesome company. It was a great experience. At that point I was verticalized in healthcare so that was sort of, you know, at, at Standard Registers where I started my intense focus around industry and where I really kind of caught the bug around, you know, what it means to really deliver to a customer in the industries that we serve. And then I continued that at SAP. And, and one of the interesting things about that move was I actually took a step down. So when I went to SAP, I had to decide whether it was right for me to say, I'm going to step back and actually move down a level in terms of my management structure. Um, because I feel like it's the right thing and I believe in the long-term capability for me. And I also gave me a chance to learn a new industry. For me, it was a new industry. So it was like, I felt like that was the right choice. It was a scary choice though. I, I was uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable to say, you know, I'm going from here and I'm going to go down here and then go try this new thing. But I'm so glad I did. And I, it was the right choice for me, maybe not the right choice for everybody, but I think those are the kinds of questions people have to ask themselves. We get very caught up in levels and titles and that it drives a lot of people. And if it does, that's okay. But I would encourage people to say, what's the right role for you at the right time? And do you believe that that role will carry you to the place that you think you wanna go? Which by the way, could change, um, but make sure you understand that. And then I loved SAP. I did so many different roles there as well. And um, I got to run a cloud business and that was such a cool experience. I was sort of on the traditional on-premise side for a while. And then I went on to the cloud side of the business when we did an acquisition of success factors at SAP. And that was an amazing experience. And then, um, you know, it was hard, hard, hard to leave SAP. That part was really tough. I loved it there. But something just spoke to me when I was engaging with Microsoft around the mission and the value. And I think that's that's something that happens at a point in your career, I think, where you say the mission of the company, the values of the company, 
touched me personally and I felt like I feel like that's the right place for me. And I remember my husband even saying when I when I left and when I started engaging at Microsoft, he said, this feels like the right fit for you. And that's a personal thing. Um, but it was it felt good. And I think that was part of why I was happy about that change. Wow. And I think the um, decision, as you said, to take a to step down or even a lateral role is something that people agonize over. Yes. And it's really courageous, um, but it but it shows, I think, the your commitment to learning. Yeah. And wanting to understand more and knowing where you are and where you're not. And and then how do I how do I use this as an opportunity then to spring? Because you are super competitive as well. And and then I, as I'm as I'm sure you would say, you oh, use yeah. it as an opportunity to to learn industries and and now run industries for Microsoft. Yes, yeah. and it's it is. There's this you know, it's the combination of, you know, having confidence. We're all anxious, right? So like, if anyone says they don't have that little voice in their head being like, can you do this? Is this going to be a bad idea? Like, I think everybody has that, you know, and I had it like it was it was uncomfortable to say, should I do this? Is this going to push me back? Is this going to make me continue on a path that's slower because I decided to take the step back? And it didn't. I mean, I think just like anything else, you dive in, you know, you prove your worth. I, you know, you know, I'm big on this. Like, a lot about what you do is proving your value. It's always about proving your value. So whatever job you're in and you know whatever experience you're having, if it's something that you feel like you're ready to do something else, you gotta prove it. Like it's not something that just shows up. And I think that's that's a message I always try to share and I know you do too when we do our career talks. It's, you gotta lean in. I mean, grit matters. Like you've gotta have the, the, the focus and the energy to provide value. And that's the piece that I think I want, I would ask everybody to walk away with. Like, it's not just about you and what's in your head. It's about what are you actually delivering for the company? The company will see it and the company will help you figure out what the next role is. But you got to own that. Like, that's something I think people have to personally own and drive. You use the word grit and I know it's a word, um, you know, I've heard you use before. Yeah. You also like to talk about assuming positive intent. Um, yeah. So I love the comp, like sort of the balance of those two. Will you talk a little bit about both of them? Yeah, sure. So I think, um, as you mentioned, I'm a competitive person. <laughs> you know, I grew up as an athlete. You know, I, I am used to being in the environment of practice, practice, effort, um, yields, reward. So that, you know, people don't just get to step on a field and, you know, some people do. But most don't just step on a field and have exceptional capacity to run for, you know, extended period of time or, you know, be able to make a perfect pass. Like those things come from practice. And I think about the same thing in our professional lives. Like it's practice, it's work. Like it's it's the desire to really kind of get in and figure things out and be involved and understand that it doesn't always just come naturally. And I think some people feel that way, like it should just work out. It doesn't. Like, you know, it's work. And I think that's I, I am so grateful to my parents who raised us that way. Just things weren't always easy for us as a family. And it was like, it was work, you know, and I watched my parents work and they both did and, you know, provided for all of us. And, you know, things were hard sometimes, but it was something that really helped us, all of us, you know, think about how my, my brother and my sister to think about how important it is to always be working hard and contributing and making sure that you feel like you it's okay to do the things that are messy. And so, you know, you shouldn't feel like you should be sitting above it, like especially in leadership, you should be in it, you know, in it. And and we talk a lot about model coach care at Microsoft. Like, that's modeling. That's showing people that you're you're willing to do the hard stuff. And I think positive intent is kind of a fun one. I mean, I, you know, when you are working in whether it's large company, small company with a customer, whatever it is, you never know what somebody's going through at a particular moment ever. And I think especially now, like as we are in this, you know, we've been through a tough thing in the last year and a half with the pandemic. You don't know what's going on for somebody else. And so I always say to people before you react, someone might say something wrong. Someone might do something that feels bad. But just try to assume positive intent. Don't assume that somebody's doing something to hurt you. Don't assume somebody's doing something wrong on purpose. Sometimes they're coming from a really tough place. Now, there are examples where people are just jerks. That's reality. <laughs> but I, I think to to first give people that chance and give the experience or the company the chance, assume positive intent. And then if it's not, it isn't. But I think you go into life like that, I don't know, just things seem better and easier and happier because you're not so much kind of curled up on what's going wrong or what didn't happen or why didn't it happen. It's more about, you know what, everybody's trying. 
let's sort of figure this thing out. Let's work together to, to, to solve it. And we all have our bad days, right? There are days when you want to smack somebody. That's reality. You know, for me, it's like go for a run or, you know, get on the bike or do whatever. But um, working that stuff out matters. So that's sort of how I think about grit and positive intent. That's great. And you can almost feel as you're talking the loop of grit and positive yeah. intent um, oh, kind of feeding off each other. What advice, you know, for those watching who might be early in their careers and look, maybe looking for a change of scenery, what uh, what advice would you give them? Yeah, it's, you know, it's interesting. I just read an article yesterday that uh, Americans are moving jobs at a higher rate right now than in years. So it's sort of interesting that I think the pandemic has given people that place to say, I got to think about what's important to me. So I, I just talked to somebody the other day about this, that yeah, they were they were thinking about a new role. They like their job they're in today. Um, and I said, you know what? Write down the five things that matter most to you. Doesn't matter if it's, you know, everyone assumes it's money. It's not always money. Money's important. Don't get me wrong. But it, that's one of them. I said, so tell me what the five things are that matter to you when you think about work. Don't put it about the role you're going, you're seeking. Don't put it about the role you have now. Just five things that matter. And so we sat there and he kind of thought through the five things that matter. And, you know, he was for him, it was things like you know, that I'm learning, that I'm in an environment that feels like I have a chance to contribute and I'm heard uh, that I'm continuing to grow in my career. And yeah, you know, money, of course, was one of them. So there were but he, and then I said, OK, so now that you've got your five and he had two different opportunities that he was considering. I said, Mac them, you know, just put it side by side and say, do they meet the five? And if any of the five aren't met, don't do it. Like if those five things are that important to you, then be rigid around what matters. And I think sometimes people tend to let a few things go because they think, oh, it'll be OK. You know, the money's really good. It's I just think money, again, is, is super important. But I think people have to look at the big picture. So that's my advice It's just. Be true to yourself. Don't care about what anybody else thinks. It doesn't matter. What matters is what you believe about you and what you actually think you want to do. Advice is super helpful, especially with people that you trust. Like you are the best example I have on board. Your board of directors is amazing. Like the concept of a board of directors is amazing. And you have just been an exceptional example of that. People that you actually trust. Not everybody is in things for your best interest. They're just not. Um, so when you get advice, make sure you're getting advice from people you actually think care about you as a person, first and foremost. I think that would be the advice I would give. It's great advice. Uh, it's, and I've never actually heard you give the sort of give the five things, because I think so much we often, um, you know, we go to others to tell us or we look at external benchmarks of to your point pay or title. But actually, you have to know yourself first, and then you can go to your board of directors. Yes. But those five things, if you're clear, then ultimately it will, you'll make a much better decision. And um, it's so simple, but it, it's so smart to actually get, I might have to do that after we're done. <laughs> and to be honest about it, I think that's the part that's hard sometimes. It's like, you don't want to look silly or you don't want to feel like a jerk. But be honest about the five things. So if money is your number one, say it's your number one. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I think that's the piece that people get caught up in this. What should I say? What should it look like? It's like, no, it doesn't matter. What What is it? What is it for you? And then you'll make a good choice. Otherwise, you're going to be six months in and be like, what the hell did I do that for? Like, right. this doesn't fit. It doesn't feel right. I'm frustrated. Then everybody's frustrated. You know, your family matters a lot. So, you know, you should have that conversation with your family, too. And I know most do, but I just can't not say it like you know that is something everything we do every day impacts the people we love you know and so it's important that they're on board with it too absolutely so we have a lot of microsofties who are who watch and tune in i know they love cup of sunshine too i do um particularly because it's it is a very ambitious and competitive uh, group of people themselves what uh what about what advice would you give some of them watching this as, as the company that we work with and for yeah i think it's um you know a lot of and it's it's kind of funny if you know, year time of year matters a lot too at microsoft so you know we're at that end of year for us um at microsoft and a lot of people are starting to think about what's next for them i think there's a there's a pressure at microsoft to always be thinking about the next role and there's a people have in their mind there's like a certain amount of time and if i haven't moved in that certain amount of time that means you know something's wrong or i'm not progressing the way i should and i don't actually think that pressure is real i think we sort of 
create that pressure internally for ourselves, to your point, because it is, you know, it's an environment of brilliant people who are so capable. So part of it is that, like you see kind of movement happening around you and you think that means, wait, you know, should I be moving too? And I think that first thing I would say is it doesn't, again, doesn't matter what's going on with somebody else. Like what matters is what's going on with you. And I think when people are at a place where they say, I'm ready for a new challenge, I feel like I want to learn something different. I mean, it's one of the beauties of this company at Microsoft is there's so many things to do that I would I would highly encourage people to get educated. So go learn about something else. Go see what it's like to do a different type of role, one that you might be interested in. And you and I talk about this a lot too at Microsoft is mentors. Like everybody wants them, which is great but you gotta work to be a good mentee. And so I would also give the advice that don't show up at a mentor and say, what should my next job be? Don't, you know, you show up with a mentor, take your five things even. Say, you know, here are the five things that matter to me. Help the mentor understand what's interesting to you as it relates to roles. Because if you're in the same company, you can talk about that. Like you can get into kind of specifics around roles and capabilities and things that you might be good at and start to build that relationship so that the mentor can actually really help you. It's not that they don't wanna help you. So when I say don't show up empty handed, it's not because they don't wanna help you, it's because they don't know how to help you if they don't have more context as to what actually matters to you. So I think going through that process of understanding what you want, being clear about it, you know, making sure again that you've provided value to the company and that you can express it. So what is it specific about you that's unique, especially if you're going to do something, wanna do something else in the company that's related you know, help people understand that. And then, you know, we all help each other here, you know, start to identify different opportunities. So those would be some pieces of advice I would provide and internally to those of you who are watching for Microsoft. I know they'll appreciate because it it, you're absolutely right. It is that time of year and people get very conscious of that. Yes, very much. And so you touched on mentorship and I know you get inundated uh, with people asking for you to be their mentor. Will you talk, I had the opportunity to watch Joe Morgan with you and I was so inspired. Will you talk a little bit about people who have mentored you along yeah. the way? Yeah, he's a super example. And you know, it, it's just part of the, why that relationship works the way it does is because he deeply understands me and I deeply understand him. So it's sort of, you know, it was really fun when we got to the place where he was asking for my advice. Like that was sort of a spot where I was like, oh, <laughs> I've arrived. <laughs> yeah. But it was, you know, he's so clear on my motivations, um, personally and professionally. I understand his. Of course, that changes with time. We've known each other a very long time. So sort of staying up to date uh, with understanding where people are in their journey and their career. Like when he left being a CEO and wanted to kind of, he's a great example of grit. You know, he wanted to to start his own company and really get hands on again that's the choice he wanted. Like that's what he wanted to do. And so that was an awesome thing to talk through because it's a different experience, right? Than maybe what you would traditionally see. So those types of things, I think there's there's the understanding, there's the respect of respecting the person for their time. I mean, that's a big one, like both ways, even though we're great friends, like sometimes one of us is, is just slammed with something and it's like, hey, if you need me, I'm there. If it's something that's incredibly critical to you personally, like we're, we're going to make the time work. But there's also times where you're like just checking in, like, you know, let's do it in a few weeks. Like so the right level of kind of understanding, I think, is super important. And honesty, total and true transparent honesty, I think, is the piece that makes all the difference. Like I think when you have that connection. So he's been awesome. Like he's helped me through so many different decisions that I've made from a career perspective. Um, he's been great about just asking hard questions really hard questions where i had to like go away and be like oh mm. i didn't think you know i didn't think of that like i gotta i gotta come back <laughs> i don't have the answer so that type of stuff i think has just been so helpful to me to just and then good good friends you know that are honest and that are um fair and of course say my husband like he gets me like so it's you know he's a perfect person to sort of say why would you do that like you know so there's that good sort of connect of like that's not you like, don't do that. Or, or, you know, you, you think you want to do that. You don't want to do that. You know, so that, that balance too. So I think it comes from everywhere. And I think that's the cool thing about mentorship is be open to all sorts of angles. Like they might not be obvious to you, but there are people who just are in your life um, that have a perspective that can be incredibly valuable. Yeah. And, you know, I think hearing you talk, 
people probably, I would even assume that, you know, it would be some very senior woman in a technology company, like, or, you know, and then here you're yeah. talking about your husband, um, an early boss who then you yeah. have mentored. So to your point, it does, it's right. not just sort of like, again, it's that internal, like what, who knows me and who will, who will sort of put the, the real mirror yeah. in front of me. And yes. I know our team has, feels like we have a team mascot and somewhat of a mentor who is Miss Penny. Yes. <laughs> is she around? Miss Penny is here. Okay. Well, we she need has to have a lot of opinions. <laughs> For all of you watching, <laughs> this is a special can. <laughs> Like, I don't want to have any. Oh. <laughs> this, this Penny just says, no suitcases. Yeah. Her her coaching is whatever keeps you in this little room. I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> she's the best. So, yeah, she's, she's the, the best. I boy. have to tell all of you watching that um, sometimes we get to see Penny in meetings. And you, it's actually like there needs to be some sort of teams to tele telemetry study of what happens to everybody's faces when she makes an appearance because all of a sudden everybody's happy again. <laughs> Me too. And I have a little penny pillow back there. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's been fun. So yeah, she's the best. The best. So as we sort of wrap it up, Deb, um, you've given so much advice. I don't know if there's any sort of any more advice that you want to give to all those listeners out there as they sort of think about their own careers and navigating their own careers. Yeah, I think it's, you know, and it might sound a little weird, but I would say, you know, you got to put yourself first. So, you know, we all love, hopefully love the companies that you work for. Um, companies as an entity don't love you back. So I always say to people, you've got to be true to what you want. You've got to understand the value that you're bringing. Um, you've got to, of course, get something in return for that. Um, but just make sure that you're really honest, that you really connect and if work is important to you. So some people, there's people who have careers who like deeply connect to work. There are people who work because they need to. There are people who are in the middle. And again, just be honest with wherever you are. It doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's a personal opinion. It's okay. So I think to just have the level of honesty with yourself, even if you don't express it and you don't have to, that's your opinion, that's your thing, but know it so that you don't put yourself in a place where you feel like you're out of balance that what you're contributing doesn't equal what you're getting back, um, that you feel like the work you're doing matters and that you're happy. Like, I, th I think sometimes people forget the happy part. Like, you got to love what you do. We do, we do it for too long, all day. It's, you got to love what you do. So if you don't love what you do, ask yourself why. And if there's a reason that you can fix it in the role you're in, do that. And if you need help, ask for it. But if you don't love it and you're not happy, figure out if there's something else that is that is better for you personally. And I think that's, it's hard, you know, it's work to go sort that out, you know, yourself, but do the work because it helps. And I think it just makes a huge difference. So anyway, I hope it's helpful. I feel like I've rambled a lot. <laughs> So I hope there's some value in all this. So. Oh, there, I assure, well, I know you often will say that, but there have been so many pearls of wisdom. And I think, you know, even the the courage to say, you know, the company doesn't love you back in your, from your uh, position um, is a really good reminder that it is like we have to take stock internally and, um, you know, that you have always led with such authenticity and transparency and sort of not the traditional what one thinks of is sort of corporate. Um, and I, yeah, I know that um, all of those who get to work with you and around you are so incredibly grateful for how you inspire us. Thank you. Right back at you. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining today. And yeah. I feel <laughs> really special. Fun. I was so excited to be on Taking <laughs> You look good too. <laughs> For all of you who have joined us today in with Taking Stock Live, I do uh, actually highly recommend you also check out Deb's presence on LinkedIn. Cup of Sunshine is fantastic content. I've been really enjoying that series as well. And a huge thank you to you for joining. And we're looking forward to sharing more great content with you soon. So always please send us your feedback, your thoughts, things you want to hear more of or less of, and we'll try to be as responsive as possible. But thank you so much for today. Mm -hmm.